I believe weapons of war have no place on our streets. And we may have our disagreements about gun safety regulations, but we should all be able to agree on a few essential things. If the FBI is watching you for suspected terrorist links, you shouldn't be able to just go buy a gun with no questions asked. Well, some said today, if the FBI is watching you, you shouldn't be able to run for president either. That's a separate topic, and we'll maybe talk about that some other day. But from the White House to the campaign trail, by the time most of us woke up Sunday morning, the Orlando shooting had already been politicized. The voices on the left blaming guns and the right, voices on the right blaming radical Islam and the left, so predictable and pretty close to the textbook definition of insanity. Let's start today's political animal with the Women Vote Trump PAC co-founder and Tea Party Express former chairman Amy Kramer. Also joining us today, the Hill contributor and good friend of the program, Brent Badowski. Great to have you both with us. Having me. Happy to be here. All right, uh, Amy, let's start with you. It, it did not take very long before both sides went to their respective corners and uh, said so many things we've heard over and over again after these types of events. Uh, here is Donald Trump talking about the fight of the Second Amendment uh, and his fight with Hillary Clinton. Take a look. Her plan is to disarm law abiding Americans, abolishing the Second Amendment and leaving only the bad guys and terrorists with guns. No good. Not going to happen, folks. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Thank you. Amy, do you think uh, Hillary Clinton would uh, abolish the Second Amendment were she to become president of the United States? I think she would try. Absolutely. I don't think she would be successful. But look, this happens every time that there's some major tragedy like this. They go to the Second Amendment and gun rights. They use it every single time. And the fact of the matter is, it's not going to solve the problem. Criminals don't abide by the law. And even if you had a, in gun-free zones, look what happened in Paris. I mean, you know, I'm glad that Donald Trump has had such an impact on her that she's finally able to say radical Islam because up until now, she hasn't even been able to say that. So the American people are looking for leadership and they're tired of this political correctness and they want us to be safe at all costs. And Donald Trump is the one that has been forward on that. And I think that uh, more people are going to rally to him because safety and security are number one. Well, Brent, somewhere well, between Brent, Hillary Clinton, uh, Donald Trump saying that Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment uh, and gun rights advocates uh, saying that there need to be more guns. Where, you know, where are you on all this? Well, I agree uh, with Hillary Clinton and with most law enforcement people that the fellow who had the gun this week that murdered people, and I'm sure Amy agrees if she'll be honest about it, he shouldn't be carrying around weapons lawfully approved. Uh, Hillary Clinton believes, and I believe, that if somebody's on a terror watch list, and I'm sure Amy agrees with this, should not be having a gun if you're on a terror watch list, if you're making threats against other people. Let me finish, Amy, you'll have your turn. Calm down, please. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, that that nobody is saying abolish the First Amendment. That is complete nonsense. When people well, to the Second Amendment, oh, Brent, the, you mean the Second with, Amendment, the Second Amendment. Yeah, nobody's saying that that the Second Amendment should be abolished. That's just nonsense. That if people are on terror watch lists, they shouldn't have guns. In fact, if people actually, are making let's, threats like this person, they shouldn't have guns. I want to play Second a clip. The Second Amendment wasn't designed to let terrorists get guns. Brent, I want to play a clip. I want to play a clip from President Obama doing a town hall with PBS NewsHour. Uh, last week, and here, or two weeks ago, here's what he had to say. I just came from a meeting today in the Situation Room in which I've got people who we know have been on ISIL websites, living here in the United States, U.S. citizens, and we're allowed to put them on the no-fly list when it comes to airlines, but because of the National Rifle Association, I cannot prohibit those people from buying a gun. All right, I don't want to focus too much on the NRA itself. It's kind of like the third rail in this discussion. But, Amy, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, and this is going to be coming up for a vote, uh, or Democrats are going to push for a vote in the U.S. Senate, about prohibiting uh, people on these no-fly lists, people who are suspected terrorists, who are under FBI investigation, from being able to buy guns. Good idea, bad idea. 
look, you know, I want us to be safe. And if somebody is on a terrorist watch list, this guy was on a terrorist watch list. And I agree that if you're on a terrorist watch list, you should not be able to buy a gun. But there have been mistakes made with okay. people on a no watch list uh, or a no fly list that should not have been there. I mean, we need to look at all of this very thoroughly and make sure that we get this right. It's not where you all of a sudden, you know, some incident happens and all of a sudden you go and change your rules immediately. That's not the way it should work. And at the end of the day, like I said, you know, it's it's not, I mean, criminals do not follow the law. They're going to get guns no matter what. It doesn't matter if they're on a, a no watch, on a, a, a watch list or not. If they want to get a gun to kill someone, they're going to do that. And it's going to be very hard to stop them. We've seen that. They go about doing this in ways that we, I mean, uh, you know, the watch list isn't going to stop them. Sure. Senate Republicans have said this is about due process, that if this were to pass, and this bill is promoted by Dianne Feinstein from California, that if this bill were to pass, Brent, that the federal government would be able to remove your constitutional Second Amendment right without due process. That is the Republican argument. What do you think about that? Oh, there should be due process, of course. But I just heard Amy and I and Hillary Clinton and President Obama agree. I know. Somebody on a terror watch list should not be carrying a gun to kill people in Orlando and San Bernardino. Now, Amy needs to persuade Donald Trump. One other point real quick. Actually, actually, sure Brent, Amy he's been also, on Donald Trump has been on record about this. He has had reservations about allowing people on terror watch list to buy guns, whether that is well, his still position about, today. No, it's not about he said that in the John, past. It's not about reserva It's not about reservations. The answer is no. OK, they shouldn't have guns. But it's, it's not no. that it's not that easy, you Brent. Repeat, I, you know, I, you know, yes, from, it is. from it a from, is. from a from a from an alligator brain standpoint, I agree with you. People who are on terror watch lists shouldn't have guns. It seems like common sense. However, we have seen numerous yeah. cases of people being on these terror watch lists. It shouldn't be have it should not have been on there. The, no, the no, discussion they, they we should, should John, Brent, Brent, should Brent, hold have, on, hold on, hold on. The discussion we should be having is how we can better vet these terror watch lists so we don't create uh, this haystack that oh, James yeah. Comey talked about today that is simply no, just I, too big for for the federal investigators to to sift through it. No, I totally agree with that. There ought to be due process. It ought to be enforced. But I want to repeat uh, people that threaten people, people that do uh, the kind of activities that this fellow did in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016 shouldn't have guns. There is not a word in the Second Amendment that has anything to do with it. One final point real quick and then you can real quick because I want to get to some I want to get to a call. I agree with General I agree with General David Petraeus and I'm sure uh, Amy shares my admiration for him that bigotry against Muslims hurts America and helps terrorists. I think Donald Trump might want to take a lesson from All David right. Petraeus <laughs> and I hope Amy would agree with that. All right, but let's not go down that road. Amy, I want to give you 20 seconds to respond because I want to get to this call. Go ahead. Constitutional right to own a gun. It is our Second Amendment right to own a gun. But I'm going to tell you that this, all this political correctness about, you know, you can't say radical Islam, you can't say, I mean, it's a bunch of BS and we need to stop it. We need to look at what's going on. It may be you want to think that we're not at war with them, but guess what? They're at war with us and they have been for a very long time. And at least Donald Trump is standing up and saying, we have a problem and we need to figure out how to fix this problem. Problem. All right, let's welcome in uh, Jim, who's calling from Chicago, Illinois. Jim thinks we need to enforce the gun laws that are currently on the books, not add more gun laws. Jim, tell us why. Well, you know, I don't know about this guy getting a gun. If you're arrested for domestic assault, you can't buy a gun. You can't get a license. I don't believe he was actually arrested. I, I'll have to get some clarification on that. I'm I believe he was convicted. investigated for it. Uh, I don't know if he was ever criminally charged. Yeah, but, but also, if you're convicted of DUI, you can't get a gun. Um, and everyone keeps using the Are you sure that's the that, case? I'm sorry? Are you sure that's the case? I know that there are some sentences yeah, that, that just, include I that you're not allowed to have guns years, while you're... If you had but been what, arrested for a DUI within the past 20 years... I don't know what it is on state to state, but a lot of times when the sentence is over... Uh, as long as it's not a felony DUI, your rights are restored. So not every DUI is a felony. But go ahead. It's a 10-year deal if sure. you're convicted of a DUI. 
Uh, and I, I heard this guy was also working for the Department of Homeland Security. He worked for a private uh, security contractor, the British-based G4S. And uh, we'll have to leave it there. There's concerns about that because they had contracts with the federal government. Uh, next caller is yeah. Stephen from Liberty, South Carolina. Stephen, real quick, go ahead. Hello? Uh, uh, Stephen, uh, fortunately, I think we're out of time before we were able to establish the connection. Now, time is never, never enough here on this show. Amy, Brent, great to speak with you. Go ahead, wrap up. Last word to you, Amy. Yeah, I just want to say, look, we're not talking about who dropped the ball here. Did the FBI drop the ball? Is there communication with the CIA, the NSA, and the FBI? I mean, somebody dropped the ball here, and right. we need to be right. talking about that. And we need Guns to find out who. That's exactly right. We need to find out who, and that's the discussion we need to have. And thank you guys for participating, trying to get to the bottom of that. Amy Kramer, Brent Podowski, good to have you with us. More to come here on The Hardline after this.